Welcome to uh, part three. I'm joined by uh, Adam from San Francisco. Adam, did we speak about uh, your opinion regarding this, like, vendetta it looks like on social media and on YouTube channels where YouTubers seem to be going after Ben Shalom in every interview with Eddie Hills and Spotty Frank going after Adrian Mole? Have we noticed it? Um, I'll be honest, Paul. I the last let's say ten days, bar uh Porky's Corner, I haven't really uh been following that much um outside media, pal. It's just been just been Porky videos, just yeah. been busy, so I haven't seen too much. But I feel like um, I feel like there's always kind of been like a mini pylon on Sh- on Shalom uh from the word go, really. Yeah. Um, but you you reckon it's got much worse, yeah? Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I do. I think I think they're sticking it to him too much. Yeah, I mean, he's only generally... been blocking him behind the scenes. He's had it hard trying to get going. You know, he's made it really hard for him, aren't they? Because they're old stages, aren't they? Yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, they've made it almost impossible. Um, you know, we've been kind of critical of parts of you know the five cards and you know the purse bids and all the rest, but I think under the conditions that he's had, uh uh, look, I'm not saying he, he couldn't have done better, but like you say, he, he hasn't had the perfect conditions to succeed. So, um, but this is unsurprising. I mean, you know, you, you look at Frank Warren back in the day, you know, like the, the, the cartel and Mickey Duff and all the rest. Um, you know, he, he was Shalom once upon a time in the West. You know what I mean? And uh, you see this the whole time in boxing. You know, you become what you what you hated. They're not what you hated, but you you become what you battled earlier in your career. Uh and now you have Shalom trying to do the same thing. Um so I don't know. I mean there's talk what there's talk about uh there's talk about Sky Sports being split up. Uh multiple promoters or like you know thirty percent of the shows will be going to other promoters or something. Did, did I pick that up right man? Yeah. Yeah the so... problem they're gonna be splitting all uh dates and that sky you know because obviously he's he's not been able to cover dates has he they've not been going 20 dates out of the like they used to with eddie have they no because i've been able to he haven't been able to put shows on the bad cancellation it's been a nightmare but he's been up against it and he costs he got lucky didn't he really with with gig with sky didn't he and I think what they've done they presented it and they because they've always had control of it and they them two aren't they Rick Top mm-hmm. and Hills. And I think with him booking the trend, the old status quo, and I think it's put the noses out of joint, and it's so they've gone after him. Yeah. Eddie, especially, and Spotty Frank. Yeah. Actually, I've noticed Eddie, like any any time, yeah, he brings up, you know, the talking about like Adam Azim and stuff and kind of, you know, the backhand of compliments. Well, I'm in that Adam Azim fight now. The kid's had nine fights, has he? Mm. Dalton Smith's, you know, he's already British champion. And he's just won WBC silver, which means zilch. Mm-hmm. But you know, he's in position, isn't he, for uh, you know, for going for a world title. So, you know, he's way ahead of him. You know, he's probably two year ahead of him. Mm. You know, so why why are they doing it now? Just are they just doing it to belittle McGuigan's, or are they doing it to build it up for the next couple of years? Because the way off fighting and making proper money, aren't they? Nobody risks it like George Groves and James the Gale, do they nowadays? No, no, and and, and that, that's why I'm look. I, I don't want to see Azim go in there and get pummeled, like if he's not up to it. Because like we talked about with Harper, if you take a bad enough defeat at a certain time in your career, it can have a very very negative effect. But you know, we talk about the throwback days. You know, anybody, anywhere, any time. Um, you know, you look at a guy like Denzel Bentley and stuff. Like he took, you know, he took the Yanabek fight on short notice. Very competitive fight. Um, and I think instances like that don't get enough credit. Um, you know, where boys think I mean, we talk about taking on fights. Uh like you know, Ryan Garcia got all the props for taking the 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 Davis fight. Um, but then he comes out after and he says, oh, I knew in the dressing room I was going to lose. The point I'm making is I think people should only get credit for taking fights if they truly believe in their heart and in their soul they can win. I don't think Ryan Garcia thought 
that he could win. I mean, he definitely didn't think he could win on, on game night. Whereas you have a guy like Denzel Bentley went in there. You know you're up against it. Uh, but he went in there and he tried to win. Do you know what I mean? So I would give Azim credit for it big time. But I think it's more of like a bullying tactic from Hearn. Like even last night, you know, he said, oh, I dare you. I dare you. It's like, get down off your soapbox, you prick. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, he's going to push it. I think it's multiple things. I think he wants to, um, I think he wants to kind of destabilize Boxer at Sky Sports. I mean, like if Dalton Smith went in there and smashed Azim up, that's one of their prize assets, uh, badly affected. You know what I mean? So I think Erhern's pushing so hard because I think like he thinks Dalton Smith will win. And I think he wants to kind of disrupt the the boxers the the boxer stable. Um so I, I mean I guess all's fair in love and war, but uh it seems a bit over the top, man, uh, at the minute from from Matchroom and Hearn. Where do you see uh it's big freeze and Wardley going if they lose? Ah. Uh... I think I would be more worried for Clark if he loses. And I'll be honest, I've I have I have Wardley winning that fight. Uh I think like we talked about earlier with, with Campbell Hatton, you know, you you can't put the dog in somebody, it's not something you can train. I think that's naturally in Wardley, where I don't necessarily think it's naturally in Clark. So I think if Wardley can make it a dog fight, I think he wins. Um I think if Wardley lost, it won't affect him as much. You know what I mean? Like, obviously, he comes from a different boxing background. I think he takes things a little bit less seriously. I think if Wardley did lose, he could kind of fall into, like, a Dillian White role where, uh, you know, he's getting good domestic fights, hmm. making decent money. Um, I don't know. If, if Clark lost, man, I mean, you know, his pro career has kind of been stagnant. You know, it's been stop-start. Um I don't know, mate. I would kind of worry for Clark if he loses. You know, it's hard to um, it's hard to see where he falls back in the mix. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's uh, because he's only had nine fights, hasn't he? Yeah. Um, I don't. I mean, Clark kind of reminds me. Of, I wouldn't say it reminds me of Terry Harper in a way, but like, um, I don't think he. I don't think he makes the full use. Of, of his physical abilities, you know he's a massive man. Um, whereas like I just don't think he's willing to risk it all in there. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he will prove us wrong. Um, but I think if he did lose and he lost badly, I think it might be a reflection time. Um, I mean again, look like you say nine fights. He went pro late. Um, I don't know, mate. I fancy Wardley in that one. You know. I genuinely do. What, what, what do you? I think you you backed uh, Clarkie, right? I want it's big freeze to do Wardley because if a white collar can go this far, it just embarrasses. If a white collar beats an Olympic bronze, what does that say about the sport? Not a good luck, pal. You know it, it's uh, it's shocking, isn't it? Yeah. No, Either okay. Olympic systems crap or Wardley's like a freak and he soaks it up like a sponge. We're going to see, aren't we? Yeah. You know, and it's a fine line, isn't there? <laughs> there is. Yeah, but, you know, it's that age-old question, man, that, that age-old debate where you look at amateurs transitioning to pros. I mean, there's there's multiple aspects that you can look at. I mean, do they stay in the amateurs for too long? Um. If they do stay too long, you know, they get used to they get used to three threes, completely different structure. Um, so it's hard, man. I don't know. I mean, you know, we, we've seen amazing amateurs that didn't transition to pro, and then we've seen amateurs that actually weren't that great that were phenoms. I mean, and it's something that people don't actually well, I didn't realize this until a couple of weeks ago. You know, Roberto Duran lost his first three amateur fights. Did he? Lost his, I, man, I burst my whole laughing when I saw the stat. And then I fact-checked it. Everywhere you look, it says the same thing. Roberto Duran lost his first three amateur fights. And then from there, he never looked back. Um, So, I don't know, mate. It's um, It would be a bad look. But, uh, again, some people just kind of, uh, some people adapt to the pro style. 
um, a lot better than others. On paper, Clark should win. That's not what I'm. I'm not saying that he should lose. Um, I just think that if Wardley can turn it into the fight that he wants to turn it into, I, I think it could be a landslide. So, um, so let's see, mate. Let's see. Yeah. I'm with you though. Yeah, I just I don't know. Like like I said, I think I think Wardley. I think he's got he's got heart. He's tough. Um, and he's and he's ready to rumble at any time. Um, you know, technically, if if we're looking at like a fencing match, I would take Clark every day of the week. Um, but I don't know, man. Like I, I think, uh, I think Wardley's got uh, he's got the minerals in abundance, and I'm not fully sure if Clark does. Like I thought, Clark, I thought Clark made it look like a hard night against Dave Allen. I know I said that earlier on this call. You know, yeah, that was a Dave. He did, was it? He did, yeah. And that was a Dave Allen that was on the couch for what 18, 19 months or something, like a long time. So I don't know, man. I don't know. I just I have a wee sneaking feeling of of Wardley winning, winning a rough one. So let's see. Dave will regret not being fit for that fight because if he'd have been fit, he'd have done its big freeze. The Dave Allen that done Brown would have done its big freeze. A hundred couldn't agree more. I was I was actually angry watching that fight on the night because I thought the exact same thing. Yeah. I'll always have a bit of a soft spot for Alan. Um, and you you yeah you could see it even these coaches you could see it. It was just like he just he just lacked the endurance. Um, and that's what I'm saying, man. Like if 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 Clark... you won't think so because he's just under the eleven seconds. What's that? Sorry. Dave Allen can do under than eleven seconds, or he did do years, but a few years ago, he did it under than eleven seconds. Are you serious? I'm serious. Yeah, he's got record at Afield Comprehensive. Yeah, he's got Does record. He move, I, think, huh? I think he's done some other. Is yeah, it's a true story. That that's not bullshit. That honestly, I believe. I believe you. Honestly, yeah. Jesus, the fella can move. Holy moly! Yeah, eleven seconder. Big white rhino. Jesus. Yeah. Look at Larry Alabama. He's a 10 second pluser. He was a yeah. funny. Big Larry. Yeah. Jeez, that's wild. Fair, fair play to him. Uh well, it kind of makes the situation a bit more frustrating then when you hear that. But of course, uh of course it does, yeah, because he's got ability, hasn't he? Yeah. It's unfortunate. You, know, you could shake him to death. You shake life in him. You, 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 you don't know. I sometimes wonder. I know he isn't, but I sometimes wonder if he's on like, if he's had some giant massive spliff in the morning before he faces the world. And this giant spliff that the white rhino smokes, it's like this superhuman spliff. It's like super strong, and he's just like in a daze all day and just you know horizontal, and he's like casual and he laid back in it. He's a, he's a cool customer, to be fair. He is a cool customer. He's um, back, isn't he? I don't think no bothers him, does it? You know, you, you could imagine there's some being giant flood or something going through Cunningsbread. He'd just open his curtain, wouldn't he? And just, you know, he'd, he'd be, that big daft grin on his face. He wouldn't take it seriously, would he? You know, that's pretty straight, isn't it, that? Yeah, that's a funny analogy. Uh no, look, it is frustrating. I mean, look, all joking aside, I, I, I like, I like Dave Allen. I think he's given us some good nights. Um, but no, man, I agree with you. And, and this is what I'm saying. Like, like on, on paper, Clark should be much better than he is. I think at the pro level, but there's something missing, man. Whether it's between the ears, or whether it's well, sorry, I think it's all between the ears. Oh, whether, it's whether like it's... Fat Joe, doesn't he? You know that rapper, Fat Joe. <laughs> Lean he back. Looks, <laughs> it looks like him, doesn't he, Fat Joe? Let me pull up a picture here, actually. Good evening, Fat Joe. <laughs> oh, do, you think, do you think Fruity will be listening to this or will be consoling his fighter, Terry Harper? Man, I've got this Fat Joe photo up here. Oh, he's very like him. I, oh, my God. Are you listening, Fruity, a.k.a. Graham Ricks? Uh, Joe. Did you think Jimmy Flynn, Jimmy Joe Flynn, the kid that beat Hands of Foam, do you yes, think sir. He's got just rewards at end, you know, with PR and that. Ah, uh, I think so. Yeah, I well, mean, I didn't see him getting anything on the zone on that where I were watching. All I saw is what I'm talking about was uh, uh, 
hands of foam's loss unless you yeah. were hard in. No, maybe. I mean, obviously he did the interview in the ring after. Uh, uh, yeah, bar that, actually. Yeah, there wasn't much to it. Who who, who promotes Flint, actually? Do you know? Hey. Who promotes him? Like, who's who, who's his promoter, Flint? Uh, Steffi Bowles is the guy who uh, looks after Flint's career. Oh, he's okay. Done well, he's done well for him, but he's not a big puncher, is he? But he's a tough kid. He's a, Very he's tough. Three years older than Campbell. And they've, I think they've had the same fights. I think for the, both 14 and one of this. I think he's had two draws as well, hasn't he? The, the Flint kid. So yeah. they've had similar careers. But uh, if if he had, if he had a bit more pop in his punch, he'd have got Campbell out there. But Campbell's a tough kid. He is. And you know what? He, they're probably going to build Campbell Atten up now as that kid who wants to prove that he's his own man kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I can see the scripts being wrote. Well, Campbell Atten's his old man. He takes his losses and he comes back. And there's all, you know what I mean? That, that, there'll be a room. There'll be room for him that way. He's going to play son of man of the people, isn't he? Mm -hmm. That's what he's going to do. He's going to be known as that trier, that kid who don't give in and all that. That's how they're going to market him now. Because it's only hand they've got left now, isn't he? Because he's a silver spoon kid, isn't he? So they yeah. go down the other route now. They've got to go working class route, and he's his own man, and he's a young dad, and all this. That's what they're doing. That's what I'd do with him if I were advising him. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Look, now that the O's gone and he's got an L on the record, it's all about how can you. Uh, I'm not saying he's a losing fighter, but I just mean he has an L on his record. So now, how can you spin that L? And like you say, the the most profitable way to do it would probably be the narrative that you're spinning. Um. But look, listen, I genuinely wish him all the best. Like I said, it's uh you know, he showed toughness and stuff, you know, like you say, Silver Spoon or whatever, he could he could have swallowed it and took an easy night out. He didn't do that. Um, you know, Flint did well, like we said earlier. I thought he I thought he timed his, his gas tank perfectly. Uh, I thought he came on brilliant, you know, even like in the even in the, the final round, it was severe pressure. Um so no, Flint did well, man. You know, I didn't know much about him honestly before the fight, but happy for him. Obviously, uh, you know, meant a lot to him and his family. So it's nice seeing that too, man. Like the the fella that beat Eggington, um, I should remember his name here. Uh, Barrios maybe or yeah. whoever it was, the German fella. He was in tears after winning the European title, and I know like some people might see that and be like, "Ah, you know, pull up your socks or whatever." Just meant so 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 much to him, man. Like he, he couldn't do an interview, he was that emotional. Um, and that's good to see, man. Do you know what I'm saying? Like years and years and years of hard slog and running in the rain and you know, not eating a big Christmas dinner and all this, it all equates to you know, a European title. So, um, yeah, mate, look at the point I'm making is it's nice to see some small underdogs, you know, get the rub of the green at least for one night. Um, so hopefully Flint can kind of springboard off that. Um, what do you think to leave us with of a murder? What, uh, what do you think? Mate, great fight. Oh, it was a brilliant fight, I thought. Yeah. Um, yeah. he had a good night, didn't he? Grant Smith, didn't he? We Dalton Smith winning, Levers won, Liam Cameron won. You know, he done well, that, that Jim. Yeah, very well. Uh, I like that Lever style. Um, you know, obviously, great stoppage. Uh, the the fight got uh, the fight got the fight got close. I mean, it was a battle in the mid rounds. Um, yeah, good fight. Like to see him again. I like his style. Um, good card, man. From from start to finish, you got you got to give it to the guys. Um, something I wanted to ask you about actually. The did you you saw the change? Uh, Tim Zhu versus Fondora. Uh, yeah. Keith Thurman's gone. Yeah. What do you think to Amazon getting into boxing? Um it should be a good thing. It should be. Amazon oh, Prime, isn't it? Amazon Prime, isn't it? We it's a zoo fight. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's our first big one. Um it should be a good thing. I mean what there's 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 let me get this right. There's 150 million Amazon users in the US. So basically, like one in two people have Amazon Prime here, and I think it's sixty million across the rest of the world. So, what's that? You're exposing two hundred million people yeah. to boxing, even if it is pay per view. 
it, it should be a good thing. Look, as long as what happens with the UFC doesn't happen, the monopoly, that would be my only worry. Um, it should be a good thing. Who knows? I mean, the one thing I would say about that fight in that card, I think Fondora and Zoo is a way better fight. Um, I, I don't think it could have worked out better. I mean, that Fondora fella, he's six foot five and a half, right? And he's fighting at 154. I don't know if that's a record, if he's the biggest 154 ever. So, absurdly tall. Don't know, you know what I mean? Shouldn't make the weight. His body's a freak, freak of nature. But the fella fights in the phone box, mate. He doesn't keep it long at all. Like, uh, you know, he got into trouble against Ocampo. Um, took big shots. Uh, but whether this, I mean, he won the fight easy on, on paper at the end or on the scorecards. But then Shabrian Mendoza, the same man, should have been an easy night's work. I'm not saying I'm happy that the fella's losing, but like you've got a fella that's got all the 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 minerals and the ingredients to like stay on the outside, you know what I mean? Win belts, move up divisions, but this fella just comes to bang. Gotta respect it. So, uh, so I think him and Zoo will be a serious clash. Um, that Zoo fella, man, he's he, he seems like the real deal. I like the way he handles himself. He's a scary man. He kind of reminds me of uh. What do you call the other Aussie? Oh, Gio Patea. Reminds yeah. me of that. The same kind of attitude, bald head. You know what I mean? Like shaved head, no nonsense, no big talk. They just get in there and destroy. So I would like to see 154 pick up heat again because, uh, yeah, I've been a big fan of the Charlo brothers and I think they kind of held the division to ransom for a long time. So hopefully this opens it back up. Yeah, what do you think to Ryan Garcia at the moment? Has his head gone? Um, yeah, man. Uh it's either it's either a Daniel Day Lewis esque method acting masterclass. Like either this is all a play and he's fooling us all. That's option one. I think it's highly, highly, highly unlikely. Um. Option two is man, he's 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 going through something very very difficult. Um, yeah, man, and, and I, I'm not even joking when I say that. I mean, some of the stuff he's talking about. Um, I mean, from his mouth himself, there there was abuse when he was young. He's talking about that. Um, which look, that happening in itself is a horrible, horrible, horrible thing. But that seems to be on the front of his mind when he's got a fight against a pound for pound fighter in a month. You know, he's doing these YouTube lives. He's doing these streams with Andrew Tate and these people. Uh, it doesn't seem good, man. He seems in a in a very, 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 very bad place. Um, I don't ever want to see boys pull out a fight. But um, I don't want to, I don't know. I think you're putting the shell of a man in against Devin Haney if the fight goes ahead. And, you know, Garcia took a year out or 15 months out before with mental health. And, I mean... You know, we talk about people using mental health as like an easy get out of jail free card. You know, Ryan Garcia took what was it a year, eighteen months out, but he did this in, in the pomp of his career. I'm sure his promoters and his advisors and his managers probably didn't want him to sit on the couch for eighteen months. Do you know what I mean? So like, he didn't use it like to get out of a, a drug ban, or he didn't use it to make an excuse. He, he took that time himself, so he's obviously had troubles with this stuff before that cost him millions of dollars in his career just because he took the time out himself. So I would like to see him take some time out and uh, and get his head right, man, because uh, he seems like he's absolutely all over the place. And there's a lot of coverage in America of it as well because he's a big star over here, man, even outside of boxing. You know, like he does, you know, he, he does a bunch of, mod like you see him on billboards, he's modeling for Gucci and he does loads of other stuff. But uh, yeah, if it was an easier fight, It'd be a different story, but he's going in there against a bona fide killer. Uh, and I think the way he is now, I think Haney will uh, will turn him into Swiss cheese. And I don't necessarily want to see that if his head's fried. So I would like to see him some, take some time away. What do you think, man? I think Haney slices him up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. E either way, even if he was 100% mentally able, I still have Haney one and nine times out of ten. Um... But uh, yeah, mate. I I I I thought Haney and his father. I don't know how much of the build up you watched. 
um, earlier in his career, I didn't think of Haney as, as a great speaker. But I don't know if he's learning from Freud or his dad or watching other fighters. I think he really rattled Ryan's cages and all the press conferences. And he didn't say anything that out of pocket. You know, he didn't talk about his family. He didn't insult him. He didn't cross a line. Um, but I think he really, really rattled him. And I think that might have been the start. Like, I don't know if you've been following it. It seems like uh, Garcia's kind of, um, he's picked up this nervous tick, man. Have you noticed that? No? No, I don't know. If you watch watch him in interviews, if he does any recently, you'll see he does this thing where like he's he's always clenching his jaw, and it doesn't look like it's it doesn't look like he's on drugs or anything, man. It looks like a nervous tick. I think um, I think all the pressure, um, I think that's that's what the tick's about, man. I think it's kind of um, it's come out in physical form, and uh, you know you can see it on his face every time he's speaking, like he's always twitching now. So, um. If that's happening, mate, I don't think you should be getting in the boxing ring at all, but definitely not against a, you know, a top five pound for pound fighter. So I don't know, mate. I don't want to see the fight get cancelled, but I also don't want to see a fella go in there and get uh get broken into pieces if he's not uh, uh you know mentally or physically fit fit to fight. So I don't know, mate. It's uh it's weird waters for sure. Yeah. Uh what about the Joe G uh Rumours, Joe G and Coley. Really? Yeah. Um. That's the word. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's a bad matchup. I don't know if there's a... I it's don't only his second Olympian, isn't it, after Joe Murray? Yeah. Um... Yeah, look, I, I rate Joe G massively as a coach. I don't I don't think uh I don't know that I can think of a fighter that would be a bad pairing with him. Um I mean Akoli's never been short of uh physical ability. You know what I mean? Like he's got all the tools are there. Um I think with the right coach he can get back on track. I mean that Chris Bellum Smith fight was just so weird in so many ways, man. Like the the points deductions, the scorecards one of the weirdest fights of uh, I can remember watching in recent memory, um, and I don't think that's near the best version of a uh, of a Coley. So uh, I could be yeah. wrong. I could be wrong, but my spider sense is tingling. Yeah. No. Look, I I think it'd be good for a Coley. I mean, I don't think Joe G necessarily needs with everything he has going on. He's flying it. Um, but yeah, I think it'd be good for a Coley man. You know, back to basics, keep things simple. Um, if a Coley came back, would you put it past them going for bridge away? No, I, I think he could take. Get a, I think get a belt. That's where real time go if you got a Coley. Yeah, <laughs> what? Why not? Away. I said, let's get bridge away, and then you get a ranking with uh, WBC for heavyweights. So then we could chase heavyweights down. We could we could step it step from cruiserweight to bridge you and see how you feel, and if you feel all right. We'll we'll cash that bridge weight belt in after a defence or something, and we'll go for, you know, or we'll keep it until we get a a, a fight at heavyweight, you know, because they'll get a ranking, won't they? That's what I, yeah. you know, I, I don't know. I could I could be wrong, but you know, my my pork senses, uh, you know, I'm, I'm smelling bacon. <laughs> I can smell it from here, brother. Don't you worry. Uh... I might be wrong. I've been wrong before. Paul Smith, uh, he was. Putting himself about as the go-to guy, manager, and that him and Darren Till, the dream team. What's happened to that? It's all gone quiet, hasn't it? He's beefing up, fighting again. He's gone quiet, hasn't he? Mundo's gone quiet. Mm. Uh, you know, Swifty's training Charlie Edwards. Yeah. So what, 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 what's going on here, what, ladies and gentlemen? The Smiths, the Beatles of boxing. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, mate. It's gone a bit flat. I mean, I don't know. I feel like collectively as a family and maybe like specifically some guys definitely more than others. Um, I feel like there's always been like this proverbial chip on their shoulders. Um, you know, kind of quick to jump to saying we've been mistreated and this and that, you know what I mean? So, um... I mean, it's gone a wee bit quiet. Uh, I don't know, man. I mean, well, if we start with Beefy, I mean, what, he's been out since that Eubank fight, what, that's coming up on a year? 
Um, he's what thirty five or something. Um, I don't know. I don't really know. I don't know where he goes. Like in terms of look, he can definitely get fights. He's he's beefy Smith, but like, does he have to go down a level or two to get a fight? If if you banks out of the picture, um, mm-hmm. you know, I don't really fancy him at elite level anymore. So does he go down fight like a you know a domestic fight to try and get back up? I don't know. I think Mundo has got many more options than Beefy does. Uh, I think there's a lot of good domestic fights. You know, um, we've talked about a bunch of them already. Uh, where you know, it's, look, it's a step down from world level, but there's still good, solid domestic fights that everybody would watch. Um, and the rest of them, I don't know. I mean, again, a lot of cribbing and crying and just complaining about different stuff. Um, I don't know, mate. We'll 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 leave them at it, but whatever. Uh, add to the yard. What next? Ah, uh, could be Mundo. I mean. Could be fight, couldn't it? Yeah, either, either. I mean, if I was picking a fight for him, I would like to see him in with either guy. Uh, or m- maybe, maybe Boachi and Yard fight, and then maybe Mundo fights the winner. Uh, I know whatever we, you can think what you want about the Smiths, but like you know, Mundo's had a lot of big fights. Um, so I think if 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 you're going as a trio, it takes three to tango. That's how I would do it anyway. I would have Boachi versus uh, Yard, and then. Uh, Winner fights Mundo if he wants to keep at boxing. Uh, and then you've got kind of like a clear idea at, in the weight class of 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 who's where. Um, three Two good fights, though. Or three good fights, whatever way you want to pair them. Definitely good. Um, but uh, no, nah, look. Yeah, go ahead. No, sorry. Go on. Sorry, lad. Go on. You were saying. No, I was just, just going to say... I, like I, we've talked about it before. I don't think Yard's elite elite. Definitely not. I still like watching him fight, though. You know, I think he generally gives you a decent entertaining watch, win, lose, or draw. So, um, you know, I know he's kind of in that weird area where he's either like fighting for like, you know, undisputed gold or he's fighting like, you know, ex greats or he's fighting like the fellow like last time out. So, um, I would like to see him start to get fights somewhere in the middle. And I think, you know, look, Boachi's a really good fighter. It's not Jesus. I mean, I, I would, I would, I probably have Boachi favorite than that, like, you know, so. I think this would be good somewhere in the middle. It's not, but better be if it's not, uh, you know, um, Kovalev, and then it's not Joe Schmo that's driving the taxi down the street either. So, I would like to see him kind of get back in a, a normal lane, if you will. Does Matthew Atten get sacked from his brother Ricky this week? Yes or no? It's tough, man. Isn't it with family? It's tough. Um. Ah, uh, does he get? I I don't know, mate. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if he should. I don't know. Together, if he you will. lose together, don't you? Yeah. I mean, he, he, here's the thing, right? When it comes to family or anything like that, because I've, I've seen, look, not with boxing, but I've seen that like, in, in our own family. It's like, I think Matthew should only have been hired in the first place if they were in it for the long haul. Because if, if you're on the fence about hiring your brother or your uncle with the idea of, oh, we'll see how it goes for six or seven fights and then we'll get rid of them. But then if you get rid of them, you're tearing up a family relationship. So maybe they have a long-term plan. Maybe this is just, uh, you know, maybe there's no intention at all of of, of him leaving the camp. Uh, but, uh, you know, like I said, whoever's teaching, whoever's coaching Hatton, uh, his defense is his defense is a D minus or a D plus in my opinion. There's holes everywhere from top to bottom with every shot, um, and he doesn't point that hard. So, either they bring in like a a number two to Matthew, like a really really good defensive coach, or if they are going to make the change, I think they need to bring in, you know, a good all rounder coach, but somebody that's that's got like a good pedigree for for defense, um. Because yeah, mate, he's not a big puncher. He needs to close up some of those holes if he if he wants to have a any sort of career. Yeah, <clears throat> we'll finish up on Tommy Fury. Is he going to fight as a pro boxer again? Yes or no? Tommy the Phantom. Ah, uh, as a pro uh, boxer. Phantom, yeah. Uh he is not. No, sir. No. No, I I don't think he. Uh... We're going to fight again. If it's not in you, it's not in you. But if you're earning massive dough doing other things, 
Yeah. But he's uh he's got the following on him now. He does. I'll, I'll you know I thought sorry, go on. Finish. No, I was just gonna say I, th- I thought about this before. Uh you, we talk about gimmick fights. I think that Tommy Fury is the luckiest man to ever put on a pair of boxing gloves. And I'm not trying to be a prick to him for no reason. You know, you, you can think of like Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. and these other fighters. But like, if you look at Tommy Fury's career, Love Island went on, got a following, came out, a couple of small fights, fights Jake Paul for a bucket of money, wins. That rematch is still on the table. Um, you know, fights KSI, one of the worst fights I've ever seen, if you can even call the fight, got paid a buck, bucket of money. So it's like, He's getting these absolute layups and getting paid a king's ransom to do them. Do you know what I mean? So, like, all off the back of a last name. And look, look, he's a good-looking lad. Do you know what I mean? It's like, look, he looks the part. But uh, he's been very, very, very fortunate in his career. Um, and if he does fight again, you know, it's going to be a Jake Paul rematch. It's going to be another Misfits fight. And it's going to be for a nice big bag of money. So, uh, so Tommy's done very, very well for himself, Paul, you know? Yeah, we'll finish off on this last one then. Canelo, Canelo wants two hundred million to fight Benavides <laughs> in Saudi. Even he wants to come to the party now, doesn't he? Yeah, it's funny, man. Yeah, you, you read me mind. I've one note I wanted to bring up before we broke, and it was literally this. Um, yeah, mate, I just don't like Canelo at this point. I respect what he's done in the sport, but he's doing interviews. He's saying Benavides brings nothing. All he brings is an extra twenty pounds on the night. You know, for Canelo to say that, and I get like he's playing the game, but for Canelo to say that after him boiling a mere can down, it's a bit rich, like, do you know what I mean? Uh, saying Benavidez will just come in and be the bigger man on the night. He doesn't bring a follow. And if he doesn't bring a follow, and why are you asking for 200 million quid to fight him? Like, it's just, um, I know, Ter- like, I get where Terry's coming from too. He says that like, Canelo's earned the right to do what he wants. Like, um, like if if you look at a guy like Crawford, I don't think Crawford's going to be running in to fight uh, Tim Zhu or or Ennis and stuff. But the big difference is Crawford hasn't earned uh, mega money for 10, 15 years. He's earned mega money for about two fights. You know what I mean? Whereas Canelo's been on twenty five million for the last twelve years. Um, it's his own choice. I, I just I think he's making himself look worse and worse and worse the the, the way he's handling this. Um. I mean, I don't mind the Munguia fight. We, you and I talked about this. I said, like, behind Benavidez, it was probably the second biggest fight I wanted to see at Super Middle. Um, I think David Morrell Jr. would actually be a tougher matchup for Canelo. So I think it's Benavidez, David Morrell Jr., and then Munguia. But David Morrell Jr. doesn't sell tickets. You know what I mean? He's only had 10 fights. He's a Cuban. He's awkward. They'll never fight him. Um, so I don't actually mind the Munguia fight. But... Uh, there's only one true person that deserves a crack at Canelo, and that's David Benavidez Jr. And I'm telling you this now, man, if that fight doesn't happen, it will it will stay with Canelo forever. I'm telling you now, it will. Because fa- I'm not saying fans are turning on him, um, but uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I mean, he doesn't... Uh, they put, put it like this, right? There's, there's a place down the street from us here... Um, Know a bunch of the staff, big, big Latina staff work in this place. A lot of guys, great guys, love them to bits. Um, they're all uh, on the Munguia train and they're not even from Tijuana. Um, they don't like Canelo. They think, uh, you know, they used to like him. These are all Mexican guys. They used to like him when he was younger. They said he changed. Um, you know, he doesn't represent like the working class people of Mexico. He's too flash. He's got too much of a mouth. Um, and that's no. coming straight from. Do you, oh, I swear to God, man! So that 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 gives you kind of a taste of of what it's like from the inside out. Do you know what I'm saying? So that's time, that's time, mate. Yeah, yeah. No, you're good. That's it. I know, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. It's it's madness, isn't it, with them lot? Yeah. So anyway, bro. Hey, pl- yeah. absolute pleasure. We've had a good free pass to so listen. You've been a great guest. All the best. You have a great week, Adam. You too, brother. All right. I'll talk Thanks, to you soon, man. Ross. Cheers, mate. Bye. Thanks, bud. Bye. Thanks for liking and subscribing and leaving a comment. This is not a recording.